What's up, everybody? My name is Anthony Irvin. You beat yourself? Yeah. Yeah, see me myself. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh. I'm Jim Green. <laughs> Don't even leave that hit of <laughs> traffic light. <laughs> okay, good. Welcome to One Set. Have you ever wanted to start your podcast but didn't know where to start? The One Set Bros are here to talk to you about Zencaster. Zencaster is the ultimate based podcasting solution and now the only one podcasting platform making podcasting easy. They've sure made it easy for us to be able to record our podcast and our episodes every week for you guys. Once you've set up your account, you're simply one click away from recording a high quality podcast with studio quality sound and up to 4K video with your guests. My personal favorite feature is their multi-layer backups, which ensure our recordings are always in the highest quality, even during unstable web connections. And if you thought you needed multiple tools and services for your podcast, Zencaster's only one podcasting platform allows you to create your podcast all in one place and distribute to Spotify, Apple, and other major destinations. Go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use our code one set pod and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience as we do with all our podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. What's up, everybody? How we doing? Welcome back to an episode, another episode of the One Set Podcast. I am Jim Green, along with my co-host, my best friend, my brother, Anthony Irvin. How's it going, brother? Ah, It's going pretty good. Another week, another day, whatever you guys are going through. It's been a, it was a busy week, uh, you know, weekend for me. Uh, you know, Grayson got baptized this weekend, so we had family coming in and I, uh, you know, you and Cheyenne attended. We had a lot of family attending, so it was a fun time to being able to celebrate that, you know, event in his life and, you know, got to do a little bit of family time with uh you know, our niece and my brother-in-law who were coming up from Florida. And thankfully from this time, you know, they got to go back down to Florida without any hesitations from the storms that are, you know, going on down there. And, you know, it, it's horrible what's been going on down there. And hopefully, you know, everybody's trying to be staying as safe as they can be. I know it's like the he was saying the traveling, getting back to around his house is like insane because everybody's going this way and that way and everywhere down there. But hopefully people are uh, trying to, you know, be as safe as they can. And, you know, it's horrible to see the people that have lost a lot of things too. But, you know, nature's crazy. Yeah, the Carolinas got hit pretty bad by Helene, I think it was, that just passed. And then mm. uh, Mil- Milton that's about to come through well this week by the time this comes out it, I think it'll already yeah, have hit. they were saying it was supposed um, to hit uh, Wednesday which again when this comes out it'll be two days ago but uh, so we have yet to know what the destruction at this point is going to be but they're you know saying it's going to be another uh, hit for Florida and the, and the southern area so it's it's uh, tough to see that yeah it, they're they're saying it's supposed to be one of the worst storms that central Florida has had in like a hundred years or something like that. So um, yeah. our thoughts and prayers are going out to everybody affected by absolutely, um, absolutely hurricanes uh, at this time of the year in 2024. As Anthony was saying, we are recording Monday night, uh, this episode, October 7th. So um, by the time this comes out again, I think it's Milton is the current one coming up mm-hmm. from the Gulf. Um Thoughts and prayers with everyone down south and absolutely uh, hope everyone can stay as safe as possible. I actually saw um, a couple people on uh, X, Twitter, whatever you call mm-hmm. it these days. Um, people in Florida that have like a lot of land like and like their their land is is built to be like safe, like acres of land an enclosed farm and, and they are welcoming people that if they need a shelter and if they have animals, they're welcome to bring their animals into the fenced in that's cool land. And, um, they have like Wi-Fi generators and stuff. So I just nice. thought that was really cool because you don't see a lot of people just open up 
Yeah. Uh, you don't see that on the welcoming news. people in. <laughs> and not there's not still some good in the world yeah, when, even when you don't flip on the news and I'm not getting political or anything, but it's like yeah, you yeah. know, uh there there still is some good in the world and that is a indication that, you know, when when there are certain things that are going on, you know, there are some good people that still try to, you know, help out others in those times of need. And like Jim said, we'll say once more, you know, we, uh, our thoughts and prayers going out to everybody. Hope everybody stays as safe as possible. And, you know, if you got to get out, get out. If you're staying, just try to be as safe as possible. And, you know, don't be trying to take videos for the gram. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you see the movie Twister with Bill Paxton back Mm. in the day. Yeah, I mean, those people were chasing tornadoes, and I know it was it's like insane. a movie, a movie, but it's definitely a real thing that people do. People do <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, and some obviously for uh, like their jobs, if the if they work for like weather news, mm-hmm. anything like that. Uh, Ricky, put your hands down. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, man. <laughs> Ricky, put your hands down. <laughs> <laughs> any rate um so yeah, what do we got going on that, tonight man what's that i don't know if you i thought we were going into the next no, segment I, cut that part out like, <laughs> yeah leave that part out for leave now. that part out for now <laughs> <laughs> no i was just saying that there are people out there that like literally just go and chase weather and storms like that like just for fun and i'm like why <laughs> yeah i mean but then again there's other people that have crazier jobs and it's like why in the same thing yeah. so hey yeah. it's it's whatever gets your uh, uh your thrill going so everybody has yeah. their own little things to get their juices flowing but yeah their own jam their own thrill yeah. rides yeah everybody's got their own jammy jams <laughs> yeah so we wanted to talk about um the ple that happened this past saturday uh other than the Vince doc that we're going through right now, we haven't talked too, yeah. too much wrestling lately, um, which was totally fine. We had SummerSlam. Um, and then things were, I feel like they, um, I think they, I feel like they were planning for this to be the bigger fall pay-per-view mm-hmm. um, or at least to jumpstart the fall. Cause now we, we get um, crown jewel in Saudi Arabia in four weeks i think it is i think so yeah Um, it's on november 2nd i think that's four weeks from this past saturday so by the time this comes out it'll be three weeks from tomorrow Mm -hmm. um when the chops on and then survivor uh, series coming in like four weeks after that so yeah yeah got two big things and the end the ending of you know the ple definitely set them some things up for the next two and uh in my eyes like we always say that wwe has a time and place where the fall is usually their time where they're falling off and uh they're usually a little bit of uh like a lackluster with everything but uh the ending of this pay-per-view was definitely uh something to be like okay we're, we're about to get some real good storytelling people came back new storylines are being built. So uh, that really got me excited for what they're going to be doing in these next uh, two or three pay-per-views and even for the four coming road to WrestleMania once uh, the Royal Rumble starts. I think we're going to get another great road to WrestleMania this year. I think it's going to be better than last year. I think it's definitely going to be – yeah, a, definitely a good challenge to see if they can beat it out. It's it's going to be great. I think I think we're looking forward to another awesome season. I, well, I think we had you know you had you had the whole shebang with like how everything played out for WrestleMania last season with the mm-hmm. Rock coming in, and we were supposed to get Rock and Roman, and then um, I st- I still don't know if the story that they tell about pivoting because of what the audience wanted is true, or if they were setting all of that up all along, I know they did the documentary on it. Yeah. Um, 
I just I I think that Triple H is one step ahead, but I do also think that he spills things out there to be able to read what people are saying. Yeah. As as a general like way to poll your audience. Mm-hmm. Like when you have an overwhelming reaction about one thing where it's like barely anybody is speaking against that type of like vibe or feel that the internet wrestling community is providing. Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel like they, they feel a need to kind of move in the direction that makes the fans happy in that front. Like when there's enough support behind a pivot, I, I definitely think that, Triple H is capable of doing that. Whereas Vince um, liked to stick to his guns and he liked to just be like, this is the company that I built. And he was just more about everyone can F off and just pleasing himself. Me. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. Uh, I think uh, there is some aspect that Hunter, because uh, even in that, behind the scenes documentary from WrestleMania 40, they were saying that they had this planned out since like last October. So almost around this time last year, they had already started to make the plans for WrestleMania 40. So you got to think they're probably had already since the WrestleMania 40 started, they had already planned for what's going to happen this coming WrestleMania 41. So I think they're already, you know, at the point where they're like, okay, let's start throwing the daggers in getting these stories in there to start you know putting in these little things to get ready for wrestlemania 41 and uh what you were saying about the fact that you know maybe some of it could have been you know obviously the internet community telling them hey this is what we want and they were able to adjust to it or the fact that hunter was able to kind of you know pull the audience of like hey let's try this out see if, if it works if it doesn't we have this plan b i think in my in my sense i think it probably went the fact that they really did want to push the roman and, and rock match and after the uh you know whole internet community just went like berserk like this is not what we want we want the cody and roman i think they did see that this is what they want let's go this way but i i think they didn't expect it to go the way they they originally planned they were just going off you know little in, instances the first couple of weeks and and then just were able to lock it in uh you know so maybe they didn't have it all you know locked in right away but as those weeks were coming and as they were you know filling in the blanks and you know getting little things going they were able to just knock it out of the park and uh, like you said, I think this year is a good possibility of beating WrestleMania 40 if it's all what we think is going to happen, especially, uh, you know, with The Rock returning and Jimmy Oso now returning, you know, with Survivor Series. We're obviously looking to get a uh bloodline survivor series which we've been talking about over the last couple months when we've been bringing that up in our podcast that it looks like we should hopefully be getting a bloodline survivor series battle and i uh, i think in my head with the rock i thought we were probably thinking that the rock was going to have his own side but i think it just might be the fact that solo and rock are going to be teamed up Roman is going to eventually bring Paul Heyman back and they'll have their side. So I think it's, just, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure how they get Jay and Sammy in right now. Everybody's saying that that's Jay and Sammy will get in there. I mean, we got about, you know, a little over a month to make that happen. If they find a way I can, I'm okay. I'm definitely okay with it. I just want to see how within J, uh, Jay's storyline, unless he's totally like, hey, uh, I'm going to swerve here a little bit, deal with, you know, my brother, realign with my brother, do this, and then get back to my, you know, singles run. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the possibilities right now are endless of what could be happening over these next couple months with a lot of these pay-per-views and up until the road to WrestleMania starts. Yeah, um, which keeps it exciting right exactly because 
if things are all pointing in a direction and then they just do something randomly else different, it's like, well, then why did any of that even happen before? Mm -hmm. I, I think that, I think that triple H has like kind of all of the moving parts interweaving to make it make sense on their paths to where they eventually wind up kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, you have you have Marvel writers, people that um, mm -hmm. were making sense of the MCU on the writing team for WWE. And I think that that's super smart because obviously like the Infinity Saga for the MCU was incredibly successful in that they were able to take 22 movies to lead up to, well, 20, I should say 21 movies to get us to that's not true either because there were a couple of movies after infinity war before Endgame. but yeah to get us to Endgame being that 23rd movie they had 22 other movies before that and it mm -hmm. all culminated in that so and again that's over the span of a couple years i think years, it was yeah i think it was it was over 10 years it might have been 12 years something like that right um but yeah, if if you're going from one WrestleMania to the next, and if you have like two WrestleManias ahead planned, where it it definitely feels like we're getting uh, Cody Rhodes defending against The Rock, yeah, at WrestleMania, like that's that, what I'm just, thinking. It just seems that way, and I've got to say, I don't know who wins that match. That's the best part because The Rock could totally win it and hold it for a year until we get Roman facing the rock and, mm -hmm. and the belts on the line. And then you can set up for Cody versus Roman three in like three years from now. And then, uh -huh. and then, and then Roman can be done. Yeah. Cody might be done at that point too. I know they're both not on the younger side. Um, right. And I could also see, you know, Cody retaining it. Roman helping out Cody again, and then that's how Roman Roman and Rock start their thing, and they just start chasing it for the next year. They start feuding for the next year, where yeah. Roman, where Rock might take a few months off again, but Roman's doing his thing. Rock comes back. They start doing their you know feud of you know hey I don't I don't I don't forget what you did to me at WrestleMania blah blah blah. So again. There's two different ways that can go. Either, you know, Rock beats Cody. Cody, I don't think, beats him clean. I think Roman might do something to, uh, you know, take out the Rock f where it starts their feud. So you have, like, two or three possibilities there. But, you know, in the sense of bad blood, I think, uh, again, was another great uh, pay-per-view you know, we, we had the original Hell in the Cell start off the pay-per-view with uh, Drew and CM Punk, and they definitely let it all out on the line. And, you know, they were obviously letting everything go with, you know, blood being shown. And, you know, Drew got messed up in this. I mean, he, yeah, he ended up getting yeah, he did. like 16 staples down the center of his head. <laughs> so th there was a little post that I saw about him saying that, you know, we, we need to definitely start giving him a lot more credit for uh, what he's been doing in and around this CM Punk feud, even on the social media side, uh, you know, in and out of the ring, keeping this feud going, keeping it fresh. And, you know, instead once trying to make it about both of them, but then also uh, continuing it by starting to make it more personal with bringing, you know, the, the bracelet into it and family and everything. So uh, I think this was something to really not only, you know, give CM Punk, uh, you know, the confidence to get back into uh, the WWE ring, uh, but also shine Drew and seeing how much he can, you know, uh, shine out on making something relevant. So I, I think he's definitely probably going to take a little bit of time off uh, from this, but I, I can see him probably, if not sooner, but definitely making another return in the Royal Rumble. 
Who's making the return? Drew? Drew. Yeah. I mean, I I feel Drew and CM Punk are the feud of the year, right? Like I'd they, say, they, yeah. They have to be. Okay. Yeah. Because it started from the Royal Rumble mm-hmm. and went all and went all the way until October now. Yeah. So um, and like I said, they kept it, you know, fresh. I mean, it's it it got a little stale there for about a month or two, but I think Drew taking it per- on the personal level reamped it back up over these last couple months and definitely showed a different side of it to kind of get that last little burst of flames with this feud out of it. So because we were at the one point saying like, where do they go from here? How do they keep this going? And I think Drew has been doing a good job of you know, using social media to, you know, keep this thing going and taking it into a personal level. And I I mean, I think he did a wonderful job to working with uh, CM Punk with it. And I think that they did a great job working Seth in and out of the feud. Yeah. Um, Because so that you don't obviously, Mm -hmm. obviously at WrestleMania, we got um, Drew McIntyre, beating Seth Rollins and then CM Punk helping kind of cause the successful cash in for priest. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so they were able to integrate Seth in and out of the drew and CM Punk stuff mm-hmm. enough that it helped the feud keep carrying, even despite, you know, punk's arm injury from the rumble that lasted yeah. him as long as it did, they kept him out of action. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Drew was dealing with an injury in like the June, July, like summertime okay. where like he was on TV, but not wrestling. Like he wasn't actively, he wasn't cleared for in ring. Right. Um, I, I think that they both did a stellar job keeping the feud relevant amidst their injuries along the way. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, I think it I think it was right that they that they saved I feel like Triple H had this Hell in a Cell match for Bad Blood for Drew and Punk planned since like after the Rumble going into Mania season and Drew McIntyre renegotiating his contract was probably like, hey, if I'm not in the title picture give me something that feels like there's a reason why I'm here. Mm -hmm. And they had him completely immersed in the CM Punk storyline. And, you know, CM Punk coming back last November, ultimately to set up for their for his match was Seth at mania, which got put on a back burner. But now we know we're getting it at mania 41 Mm-hmm. And they're and they've already laid all of the groundwork yep. along the way, especially on so tonight's it, Raw with, uh, you know, Seth kind of interrupting him at the last moment of his kind of little small promo. So, you know, that's going to come eventually down the line. You know, I think Seth obviously is dealing with Bronson Reed right now while CM Punk is healing up. So they'll do a another pay-per-view or two with him. <laughs> And again, could possibly start seeing a lot more of the sparks flying with the CM Punk and Seth Rollins thing as we get closer to the uh, the Rumble, Rumble and the Road to WrestleMania. So definitely, I mean, I know that there, there definitely was talks that we were going to get Punk going after Gunther, mm. but they're doing this. Um, men and women's champion, like crown jewel champion. Yeah. Where it's, where what it's do you feel the, about the, that? The, um, I mean, they're, they're calling it the, um, like the 2024 crown jewel champion. Yeah. So it's not a belt that's going to be defended. It's just like Braun Strowman's, uh, greatest Royal rumble title that he won. Yeah, you never it's like only, only a crown jewel. Only a crown jewel will they be winning this? It's not like they're. I don't think that's going to be a belt they're going to be carrying around throughout the year. It's just going to be when they're in crown jewel, this 
uh, belt will be either defended by, you know, the champions at the time. So this year being that it's most likely obviously going to be Cody versus Gunther and Nia versus Liv. Liv. So, uh, you know, those matches will be going on. They'll have those champions, but it's not like they're going to be holding those belts throughout the year because it, it's only obviously going to be dedicated to Crown Jewel. And I think it's just to kind of keep that uh, pay-per-view somewhat relevant to keep people watching. Yeah, and it's like, oh, cool, we're going to throw a championship on whoever wins these two matches, but it doesn't hold any stakes after Saudi Arabia. No. <laughs> it, it just goes down. It's like winning the Andre the giant uh memorial battle, battle royal yeah um it's just like hey at this wrestlemania i won this thing like good job big man yeah <laughs> <laughs> just there to be there right right mm-hmm. um so when they do the 2025 cr- uh, crown jewel champion it will be a different title and it'll just be every year this is who won the crown jewel championship mm-hmm. um that's cool. Um, kind of like the, uh, I think they did that at, uh, did this at the Crown Jewel, like the the biggest Royal Rumble, or no, was that at Crown Jewel, or was it one of the other Saudi Arabia that's, things? That's the one I'm talking about. Braun Strowman winning, he won right. that. So, he won that battle royal. They gave him a belt for it, but yeah, there was nothing to it after it. It was mm-hmm. just, just you know. bragging rights, you know, yeah, there to be there. there. there yeah, so it's pretty much just bragging rights for the crown jewel thing. Just again, just to keep that uh, that ple interesting for the people of that you know type of thing, because they, they were probably like, all right, well, what? Do, how do we get this to be you know somewhat interesting for those people? Let's just make a belt <laughs> that's only strictly for them, and they just see it once a year. So. <laughs> And so, I mean, I, I didn't really think, obviously, too much of it. I'm like, oh, this is cool. I mean, but it's just like you said, it's mainly strictly only for Crown Joel. So you're only going to see it once a year. Yeah. And I think that they also kind of looked at it like, OK, well, we're not we know we're not going to do any major storyline changes at this event because we want SummerSlam mm-hmm. and War Games to be the big storyline yeah. Pay per view. So Crown Jewel is just going to be like a glorified house show. A filler. Probably. Mm-hmm. A filler. Yep. Yeah. Just to kind of break up. Okay. We can't go from Bad Blood at the beginning of October to War Games at the end of November. Because I mm-hmm. don't think they're doing, I don't think they're doing a PLE in December at all. Doesn't seem it. No. I think like, it's going to go don't... November. Or do they have something in December? I thought January. I think they have something something in December. I forget what it was. I think January is where they're skipping, and then it gets to uh, Royal Rumble in February. I think uh, February 1st or 2nd is the Royal Rumble this year instead of January. I forgot that the Rumble was in early February. I don't know if they're going to do um... – Yeah, it's just curious. They had the schedule up during the pay per view. I just forget what they had locked in for December, but I didn't see anything in January. And I I knew they they were pushing forward uh, the Rumble till February, the first week of February. So whatever that Saturday is in, in the first week of February, I think it's February first or second. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. But I'm on. I'm just looking this up. I mean. It's just it's just different. It. It's gonna be different because also we're having WrestleMania so later next year in May instead of you know really April. So that it's, well no no it, sorry it's it's it, a little bit later in April uh, instead of the first week. It's like two or three weeks later. It's so, April nineteenth and twentieth. Twentieth, right? Yep. So it's not too different, but you're we've been so used to it being like that first week weekend of april so you're gonna it's gonna be about like two three weeks later so uh i think a lot of the pay-per-views going around there got shifted a little bit but okay so so they're doing they're doing the saturday night main event deal and that's what it was for december on, i think on december 14th yeah that's what and it was. Not, 
nothing listed for January as of now. Um, I know they were doing the day one thing for a little bit, but I don't think Hunter wants people working on holidays anymore. Like, I think he's trying to be a lot better. I didn't see that on there, so I figured that was just being scrapped. So, could be. Um, it's just it, about making it's about just m- keeping stuff interesting on TV to get us through January. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they, they might throw a New Year's revolution in there. Yeah. Um, we'll see. They might just be sitting on that now like. OK, we only really want to do it if we feel like one, we can make an interesting card to build implications towards the rumble. Yeah, or if we need it. Or we're not going to do the January PLE if we think we can do enough on TV to make the road to the Rumble compelling. But I think also they're trying to decide, are we doing a PLE in the same month that we are going to Netflix for Raw in January? Like I feel like that shift and change is more the priority for the new year than just doing a throw together PLE. Yeah. But you got to make war games like Epic. If it's, if it's going to go from war games at the end of November to your actual next pay-per-view premium live event, Mm -hmm. isn't until the beginning of February. So you're missing all of December and all of January without any, any like major changes as far as like title changes or anything that sets up feuds, getting us to the rumble. Um, they would have to do everything on TV, which I guess if they're going to Netflix and they make the, the whole first month of January as like, okay, we're doing, we're front loading everything into raw going to Netflix and every week we're getting, Oh my God, WTF yeah. moments, right? That could be their plan too, to, you know, uh, you know, slow roll December, get everything ready for January. And when January hits on Netflix, bam, because I mean, I'm sure, like, I think we said off air, like sometime last week, I'm sure they're going to stick to probably obviously the two hours like segment, but I don't think they're going to have to get cut off right at the two hour mark with Netflix. It's always going to be a live taping, but I think they'll have a little bit more wiggle room, like to end a segment out if they really need to, instead of on like a, uh, a TV program, sometimes when it's 10 o'clock, you got to be cut off or unless they give you that five extra minutes. But usually, obviously like what we saw tonight, once it was 10 o'clock, that thing got cut off. So, yeah, I mean, Cody coming out and facing off with Gunther, it's like, okay, they, they just managed to squeeze that in. And then, but I, I thoroughly enjoyed raw two hours. Like I feel like, yeah, because because they have to pack out two hours, you're not getting any nope. filler stretched out moments. Everything feels important because they're trying yeah. to jam everything you in. Did, you did not see a lot of like backstage things. It was more just like either vignettes, matches, uh, little, you know, behind the scenes from the pay-per-view that just passed match. Like it, it's more wrestling, less filler stuff. You know, yeah, and even the beginning uh, intro to Raw, I felt was a lot shorter. Usually, we're used to getting like a 15, 20 minute intro. That's, it was probably like 10, 10 minutes at most, and you're out of there. Well, and and and, and we're out of here. Um, and we're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, CM Punk was like, I'm like, I can barely, I'm, I'm just gonna hang tight right here. I was like, you were saving time by not traveling to the ring and coming out of the ring. Yeah. And also, I notice, and this may change venue to venue, but the the ramp from where they walk out of Gorilla to the ring itself was much shorter. And mm. I think that I don't know if that was because of the venue or their entrance ramp is literally going to be cut short so that it cuts down the entrance and exit times. Yeah, you never for, know for TV. I mean, time will tell because if they yeah. go to a way bigger venue and the ramp is longer. I think that what they'll do is, okay, well, we got a longer ramp here. 
So while people run are the making ring. their way, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you better get the ring. Get ten ring. seconds, or else <laughs> you gotta um, win it. <laughs> <laughs> your entrance music doesn't pass sixty seconds, so you yeah. better get to the ring and do your stuff in sixty yeah. seconds. Because <laughs> we're hitting that, we're hitting your opponent's music after sixty seconds. So right, no showboating. Get there. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for the two hours of Raw, uh, and yeah. I hope that they keep I, it. I think, I think it's gonna be uh, good for them because we've been used to the three hour Raw for a couple years now. It's it's been it definitely over five, maybe just about ten. I know it's for definitely three hour over Raws f- for three hour Raws. Um, how long has it been? I I know it's over five. I'm not sure if it hit the ten mark. Maybe Bro, it has. I think, I think it's been closer to fifteen. I think it's been longer. I forgot how long I've been rewatching. So, <laughs> well, so you started back in in twenty twelve, twenty twelve, twenty thirteen. Yeah, which would have so, been. Yeah, it's been about twelve years. So, yeah, I mean, I, and I think at the time it, it was just getting into three hours. So I think there were still at two. Yeah, I could I'd, be I could be wrong. I'd but. have to go back and look. I th- I thought they went the three hours a little closer after WCW stopped. Like I, yeah. I think it was I think it happened kind of either right before we graduated high school or right after. I'll I'll look it up and then I'll Yeah, I'll we'll have to look it up with you. E- either way, uh I think like you said that the two hours is going to be great because everything's going to be more compact. You have to, you know, um, you know, think about making it's going to be getting more, um, you know, important segments in there. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, well, it's going to be less time for the wrestlers. Well, it's that's true, but it's going to be more impactful and you're going to be seeing better storylines and well, not even just better, but uh, you're going to make make sure you're getting as much content within those two hours instead of spreading it out and and then trying to find filler time within those to keep everything relevant. Where, you know, just like we saw tonight with the first two hour raw, there was a lot more wrestling, less BS, less backstage stuff, uh, maybe one or two things that, uh, you know, we had the Liv Morgan uh, segment backstage where they were talking and then they rode off again. Uh, there might have been one or two others that I didn't see, but uh, it, it was definitely a lot more wrestling, not as much, you know, uh, talk, which is good. I mean, that's what a lot of people want to see, like at just, you know, bam, bam, bam. And again, that's like the world we live in. Everything has to be, you know, get to the get to the next thing, get to the next thing, get to the next thing. So uh, it's just, it's just, I think that I think the two hours is going to be pretty good. It's just Triple H keeping up with the times and understanding yep. like, hey, if you aren't going to fill our time with quality content, we're going to go watch something else. And, and this could have easily been a USA thing with their last couple months in their contract. Like, well, uh, you know, if we're going to finish this out, you know, I'm, I'm, I know they were uh, I mean, and again, I'm not 100 percent on this, but I, I know ratings wise, they probably could have could have been like you know the three hour thing is you know we're not hitting the the numbers or any or something with the last couple of months so they probably could have worked out something in those last couple of months like all right we'll just go two hours to fill out the rest of the time and then when we go to netflix bam i mean i don't think they'll go back to three hours but they'll be able to have a little bit more wiggle room within that two hours to be like all right well if they go to 10 15 they can go to 10 15 and to finish out something but yeah uh, well yeah netflix doesn't have like a as exactly. of right now there is no live anything on yeah, netflix there's no channels so. or like there's no like cable type thing so it's like what if you have a lot it's almost like the uh the roast and everything that they had on netflix uh you know they go for like two three hours so mm-hmm. you know they could have never done that on on television no right? so i i think you're definitely going to have a lot of wiggle room where netflix is going to be like hey if you need to go over the two hours to just to get something going fine as long as you have people watching 
keep people on our on our platform, that's fine. Yep. And yeah, uh, I, I, again, I just think it was a good move with the two hours, and it's just going to be more uh, content coming our way. And I think it's just going <sighs> to be able to fill in everything leading up to what's to come in these next couple months. Uh, is is there anything else with Bad Blood? I know we didn't go through the whole card, but uh, I know no. we were kind of just going over a lot of the more the important things. I mean, the only thing that I can really say about the the Liv and Rhea thing, it, you know, Ra- Raquel Rodriguez returning, obviously seems that's going to be a, a little shift so that Rhea and Liv can kind of do their own separate things for a little bit. They'll get Rhea and uh, Raquel Rodriguez probably do something for a little bit, and then they'll revisit Liv and Rhea as they probably get back to the uh, the Rumble and Road to WrestleMania. Uh, so, I mean, we kind of knew Liv was going to somehow get away with that somehow. Uh, you know, what else was there? Uh, you know, we, we didn't really talk about the main event tag team, but we kind of talked about the, the significance of it. But uh, other than that, I, mean, I, just, I just felt that it was, it was a good pay-per-view all around. I, just, I thought that tag match was done so well as far yeah. as um, like the the in-ring psychology that all four of those guys really played into um, the storytelling within the match. What, like just even short snippets of, of like how Cody and Roman worked the crowd and controlled the crowd mm-hmm. with just little nuances towards each other to make their – um, unlikely union, like little suspect, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah i I watched it. I watched it a second time earlier today. Um, because when I first watched it, I kind of skimmed through like the slower parts of the match early on. Because yeah, there, there was a lot of slow building early on in the match. Right. Which I was, like it's. It's fine as long as the payoff is done really, really well, which I thought that I, I think thought they, they did. did a I thought they did a great job of uh having both like Cody and Roman get the hot tags. So mm-hmm. it's not like only yeah. one of them got the hot tag and the other one didn't get a hot tag at some point. Um Right. I also I also think that it's just interesting having Cody and Roman that are on this way elevated pedestal as far as they're both on the top of the mountain, like the two of them. Mm -hmm. And then you have solo and Jacob Fatu, which obviously like, I think they're great as a tag team together in the tag division, Mm -hmm. but you're going up against like Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns together. Yeah. Um, I was like, there's no way either one of those guys are getting pinned. No. Right. So even though that I knew Roman and Cody were going to win this match, I still wanted to see it. I oh, still, absolutely. I still thought it was going to be done really well. I had heard that it was closing out the show, which I was like, okay, if The Rock comes out at the end, I get it. Otherwise, the Hell in a Cell needed to close the paper. Right? I did not expect so, The Rock. I mean, when Jimmy came, I was like, all right, cool. He's coming back. You know, that's this is going to spark, you know, the comeback of the original Bloodline awesome and then once cody started putting up the the belt and then rock's music hits i stood up i'm like oh crap all right this this, all right now we're really cooking now so and he did and it was good like i told you didn't have to say anything i thought it was perfect didn't say anything gives a stare down because he's mad at cody he's mad at roman but it's not going to say anything i don't even think he probably goes on smackdown this week It'll give time to kind of just, you know, let that sink in and he'll come on whenever he wants and, you know, he'll spill what he what he needs to talk about. But obviously, I think it's going to show that he's, uh, you know, man of Cody, man of Roman for team with Cody and, you know, all this other stuff. So I think it's going to come out closer to the the Survivor Series pay-per-view and that'll probably spark up what we're going to see at, at Survivor Series. <sighs> Yeah, I really don't know if The Rock is even involved in the whole War Games thing. Um, I kind of hope. I don't think. I, hope, I definitely don't think he fights. I don't think he's in the match, but I think no. that he. I, I can see. I, 
I, I can see the, you know, solo taking over the head of the table thing because the rock was behind it all along. Mm -hmm. I feel, I feel like they save, I feel like they save that information for when we get the rock and Roman build going into next year's WrestleMania. Like, I feel like we're going to get the rock versus Roman or I'm sorry, solo versus Roman at this WrestleMania, but we're not going to know that the rock was behind solo driving the wedge the whole time. Yeah. Like, I feel like they're, they're going to save that for long term down the road. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll, I'll be a little, yeah have that kind of build into why that feud is going to take off. Yeah. Because I like it because Roman couldn't get the job done against Cody at WrestleMania 40. And the rock basically told solo, I need you to take over as head of head of the table in place of Roman and put solo up to it. Yep. But we're not going to learn that until way later. I think Mm -hmm. that's, I agree. I like that. I think, I think that's good stuff. Yep. I like it. So, uh, with that, should we get the uh, watch along started? I would love to. Yeah, man. I have I have it pulled up. I do, uh, too. Ready, I'm ready just going to do the countdown. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Uh, yeah, me too. I just had to refresh the page a little bit. So, as always, guys, with our watch alongs, uh, we're still getting these kind of worked out. Uh, we don't have a share screen with this usually because I don't want us getting flagged with YouTube. So yeah. uh, I know a lot of people have been like, well, it'd be easier if you guys just show the video while you guys are watching it. Then you don't have to work. I'm like, and I'm said, yeah, that usually would be easier. But Sometimes YouTube can be a little cranky about other people watching things, and especially if we're watching something on Netflix, they don't want you to be knowing that you're watching something on another platform while watching on YouTube. So you're going to probably yeah. going to get flagged with that. Yep. So until then, we're probably going to be doing it this way unless we're doing it on Patreon and doing it in a private way. So if you guys want that, we're still cooking on that. So make sure you guys are subscribing to the Patreon as we get that worked on to try to do some private, uh, you know, watch alongs and then we can do it uh, without probably worrying about the YouTube thing. So, uh, but yeah, so we're watching the, the second episode of the Mr. McMahon documentary on Netflix and the episode two in uh, title entitled Heat. Heat. <laughs> <laughs> so I was stoked about the first episode, so I cannot wait to see how the second episode goes. Yeah, the, uh, the way the first episode closed out, I was like, all right, I'm going to be excited to see yeah, all of these. And, we, and like- me and Jim have not watch this whole series we're going at it week by week so yep. we have not watched any of this yet so this is basically our reactions watching it in real time like in a in a in a way real time but posted later <laughs> yeah so I, like as we're recording this now it is both of our first time right uh seeing this sorry just leaning a little close in there so jim if you want uh, since I did the honors last time, if you want to take the honors on this one of doing the three, two, one go, we can do that. And I will be, and I'm ready when you are. Yeah. Um, just a heads up for anybody that has it pulled up and hasn't gone through the opening ad. You're going to want to do that first. Mm-hmm. So if you need to pause it, pause us, go ahead and do that while you let that ad play. And then you unpause. Okay. So mm-hmm. we're gonna we're gonna do the official countdown now that you've watched the ad, um, and we're ready to go. And you good? I am good. All right, everybody. Three, two, one, and play. Goo goo. Sexy phones. <laughs> There's Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> Out in a pool of women. How about that?
<laughs> no. Oh my god. It's it's just great because I've never seen this clip. I have in my never life. seen him in this type of Oh man, Vinnie Mac with the moves. Uh stand back. Stand back. <laughs> And fade the black, fade the black. <laughs> Cue La Femme Nikita. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're out of here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rock, comedy, and wrestling. So we're going to get that December 14th. <laughs> we ain't getting rock. We're getting sexy red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, waste. Waste. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh. King Kong Bundy. Yeah. And those guys sacrifice their bodies so that the guys now yep. can manage it. Uh huh. A hundred percent. Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Cheater. <laughs> Tony Atlas. Hulk Hogan scrooged them out. <laughs> Yeah, he he screwed everybody. <laughs> Hulk Hogan screwed Hulk Hogan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Vince was the first multi streamer. <laughs> I don't want you to break your back again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Hmm. Wow. My boss from Monsters was there for this. Wow. Aretha Franklin. Yep. Let's go, Aretha. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Alice Cooper. <laughs> Stupid Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. 
super dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Letting Audrey ride out in that thing because preserving his energy. <laughs> I gotta watch this match. I've I've never seen the full match. You haven't watched the match? No. I gotta I gotta take my time to watch it. I think the whole match is like six minutes total. I can see it. (laughs) Until that. Dave Meltzer always putting in his two cents. Right. <laughs> By the way. I... Talk about heat, heat. Yeah. Yeah, I really don't think anybody's going to argue about it. The Pope. (laughs) Rip's shirt. <laughs> T 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, It'll start by getting in shape. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Freezes a <in> mirror. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the world's worst movie. <laughs> Dookie? Dookie. <laughs> After that movie. <laughs> yes. yes. And add. We got ourselves an ad, folks. We'll do the three, two, one count down once this ends. All right, I didn't have an ad, so I'm going to pause. Yeah, just. I'll let you know when the third ad's done. All right, they're on ad three of three now. All right, I am at... Oh, the scrubber is weird here. It's saying it's saying there's 35 minutes and 34 seconds left. Okay. I'm trying to just time that right. Yeah, because it doesn't give it doesn't give like the time elapsed. You said 35, 34 remaining. Yep. All right, I'm there. All right, 
Uh, okay, everyone. So we are at 35 minutes, 34 seconds. And we are getting ready to unpause in three, two, one, go. He he a discharge. <laughs> Dad? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Just a little bit. Macaulay Calkin. Macaulay Calkin, yeah. <laughs> Vince doesn't miss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Donald Trump. <laughs> Jeez. And Trump. And WWE Hall of Famer. Yeah. Oh my goodness.
busted. <laughs> Who's about to get busted, Buster? Yeah, you, now you tell me he ain't juicing. <laughs> he ain't juicy. Even I did. (laughs) Stop it. Get some help. Get some help. Way to go, Vince. (laughs) Way to go, Vince. (laughs) (laughs) Waste. Yeah. Not the best of time to be putting that out in there, Vince. (laughs) Yeah. Let's up the ante on the steroids. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't gonna work. (laughs) There's a lot of heat. (laughs) There's too much heat. (laughs) Oh. Oh. Do I have to keep on saying it? (laughs) We're keeping you and your family safe. (laughs) That was hilarious. <laughs> I gave it to him right before the show. <laughs> <laughs> I gave him that shit like 10 times. <laughs> uh, another friggin' ad. Okay. <clears throat> Boy, I done gave it to him the other day. <laughs> oh my Shoot, God. I gave funny. it to him like six times this week. <laughs> <laughs> What's a brother talk about? <laughs> I done personally got it myself. <laughs> He wrote me a check. He wrote me a check. 
<laughs> it's in, it's in my bank records. <laughs> I don't got a check from the other day after I get <laughs> fifth one, fifth <laughs> one. <laughs> um, I am paused with twenty six fourteen remaining. Okay, let me back up just a, just a tad. You must have ad free Netflix. Must, yeah. Fourteen, right? Uh, yeah, twenty six okay. fourteen. All right, I'm there. Okay, here we go, people. Twenty six fourteen remaining, and three, two, one, go. Wrestling. Well, I got a couple guesses now, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> he's a dirtbag. Because well, he's a dirtbag. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get that face for the thumbnail. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. We should just do the thumbnail with them for the for the thumbnail. Like, yeah, just <laughs> we'll go back and find it after we're done recording. Jeez. <laughs> Damn, Tony, like <laughs> Vince is over there watching his back like I'll I'll give you kill Tony. <laughs> I would tore him up, like <laughs> Damn, Tony. <laughs> Man, I just gave him them steroids three hours ago. Oh, yeah. Lloyd Rage. Hmm.
This is the first I'm hearing of this story. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Mm -hmm. Since when? Like, (laughs) you didn't know that one? Mm mm. I'd heard it. I just. Jesus. Another ad. Okay. I have 1909 remaining. Uh, For those watching along with us, whether it's Friday after this comes out or anytime on demand down the road, I apologize for the number of ads I'm running into on this one. Oh, good. 1909? Yep. Remaining. Okay. Okay. I am there. And here we go, y'all, with the unpause in three, two, one, go. (laughs) (laughs) What? Hey, oh boy.
Mm-hmm. Mm. This is turning pretty south now. How'd that work out for you? Yeah, that worked out. <laughs>
little Shane. Yeah, little Shane. Love these drawings, man. Stellar. <laughs> he. He. Wow. Damn. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, that got deep at the end. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be getting good. Yeah. Well, it seems like they are doing great with the chronological order of things. Mm-hmm. So obviously we got young Vince in the last one and then his rise to popularity was through Hulk Hogan. And then that that's where they picked up at the beginning of this episode with WrestleMania two and three. Yeah. Um, and then Post all the way WrestleMania up in, one. Yeah. All the way up until Hogan leaving Vince and WWF to do movies. And then all of a sudden he was with WCW and you know, the, if you don't testify against Vince, uh, we're coming after you and him being like, I was like forced to go up there and speak against Vince. So like that was there. Were, and he was looking at like, you know, a possible like 17 year yeah. sentence if they were saying. So, you know, yeah, he, he got forced to pretty much, you know, talk on, uh, you know, talk on Vince. So, yeah, I mean, hey, it's tough when you're backed into that type of corner. So episode three, which we're going to get into, um, and I think you and I are trying to record that tomorrow night. Yeah. Looks like it's going to get into the Montreal screw job. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I think that situation happened like a year or two right before you and I even got into wrestling. Uh huh. So when you and I got into it, Bret Hart was already gone. Right. So. Because, yeah, I mean, it was pretty much coming up to, you know, the height of the Attitude Era. Well, yeah. Well, uh, like Stone Cold had just broke won. through. Yeah. You and I got into it like fall of sixth grade, right? Mm-hmm. So by that time. 95, well, 96. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. Yeah, you and I were doing uh sixth grade in the fall of ninety eight. And then in Right, yeah. So yeah, ninety eight. Yeah, and then the March of ninety nine was WrestleMania fifteen, which was um Rock defending against Stone Cold. So Rock Austin won. Mm-hmm. So we had just missed WrestleMania fourteen, which was Stone Cold beats HBK for his first world title. Mm-hmm. 
but I think you and I started. Well, were you watching like before you met me in middle nope. school? Okay. You, you I, essentially I, got me into it. <laughs> I had just started watching. Mm, July or August time. Um, so I watched SummerSlam 98, which mm-hmm. was um, Stone Cold defends against The Undertaker. And mm-hmm. the the theme song for that SummerSlam was Highway to Hell by ACDC. Mm-hmm. Dude, it was so perfect. It was. Yeah, I mean, my cousin was big into wrestling back in that era. I think he he. He doesn't watch it much anymore. He'll see things here and there, but uh, I don't think he watched too much of the Attitude Era when I was watching. But I think he was more watching it during, like you know, the Hulk the mid- Hogan era and everything. So he was probably just getting out of it as I was watching it. Right. And then my uncle, when I was watching, he was still watching. So I would go over. And we would watch a lot of the pay-per-views over, uh, you know, my mom's mom's house. And he would watch it with us and everything. So he was still watching it here and there. So he was watching a little bit of the Attitude Era stuff with us. And then once I stopped, it was pretty much, yeah, I mean, he would watch it here and there. But, yeah, I would say I didn't really watch it until you introduced it to me. And then I'm like, okay, this is cool. Then yeah. that again, that's something we clicked on, and we were just hooked. Well, yeah, it, it was like our probably our first joint. And then we comedy. realized almost like everybody in the school was, you know, watching it. So we like we're all just starting to talk about it, like you know, Tuesday mornings after all, like what happened, mm-hmm. and you know everything. And then SmackDown comes, and then we have another thing to talk about. So. Like everybody back in that era was like, you know, if you weren't watching Monday Night Raw, you know, or, you know, some other type of big 90s, you know, show film, you were out of the loop. Yeah. Definitely. It was like Monday Night Raw. If you weren't watching Monday Night Raw and like TGIF and all those, you know, big top things, it's like you were out of the loop. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you didn't know what was up with like pop culture or anything, right? Like that, really. uh, unless you watched MTV. That too. Mm-hmm. I think MTV in the '90s was pretty big. Um, mm-hmm. Anth, anything you want to pull back on before we wrap this one up? No, yeah, I mean, I think again, this was another great episode. It definitely, you know, starts. It's looked like it's starting to turn a little bit more darker into the stuff that you know while we we're like that well again we we're saying this is starting to get into almost around the time we were watching but you know it's starting to see like the darker side of the wrestling and what we didn't really realize what was going on until like now and you know th- getting into reports of what was going on back then and now some of the wrestlers are talking about it so it's yep. crazy to see like you know you see all the wrestling matches, all, all the historical moments. But then when you think of the behind the scenes stuff, it's like everything that was going down was like nuts. So it's cool to see it in this aspect of, you know, what was going down outside of the ring and what was, uh, you know, in the media and everything that obviously we weren't uh looking at even when we were watching because it was just more of us watching the tv shows and and everything we weren't really worried about the the news and what they were saying about wrestling i mean we we heard you know obviously you know when you know the things that dx were doing and kids doing it in schools and uh, we we would get in trouble if we were saying those things back and everything so those were the things that we were you know uh that i remember but if there was like you know scandals that were coming through the attitude era and all that we would have never we didn't really keep an eye on any of that stuff well we weren't old enough to again yeah we were no nowhere near as old to really be watching the news to be like oh that's something that we watch oh there's a scandal oh 
why? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, again, great episode. I can't wait for episode three. And yeah. uh, if anybody's, you know, watching this, feel free to comment what you guys think of this episode. And, uh, you know, we will be back next week with episode three entitled, uh, you know, it's uh, yet yeah, screw job. So like Jim was saying, it definitely looks like we're going to be getting into, uh, you know, the Bret Hart. Uh, and Shawn Michaels match with the Montreal screw job. So yep. that's going to be some controversial things too. So, and I heard we're going to be getting into like the Chris Benoit stuff later on and all, a lot of these other different scandals too. So looking forward to digging in and digging into a lot of these different, you know, things that might, that happen. And we I mean, obviously they're not going to solve anything, but it'll be cool to see the, you know, wrestlers and everybody talking about it, see what their thoughts on it so definitely just like always guys uh make sure you guys are following and subscribing right here on youtube we're uploading every friday make sure you're hitting us up on socials at one set pod and thank you all for tuning in we love you guys love y'all